Hi, I'm Pedro Toledo and I'd like to talk about a substance node I created called Chamfer. The reason I created this node was to try and improve my hard surface modeling pipeline. Uh, because as you guys know, uh, we always need to, to build two models, a high poly model, a low poly model, or uh, if, if, you, if you can use uh, denser meshes, you can also just reinforce uh, just reinforce your mesh but that's always a lot of work so uh, if I'm making a high poly model for baking normal maps or if I'm making a, a mesh that is already dense enough to hold all the all the highlights in the right place to hold the shading uh, and maintain the, the the hard surface sharp look of the model with a with a nice highlight uh, along the along the edges where, where the where the different planes meet uh, so you, you either have to create a, a very dense uh, geometry for real time or you have to create a, a high poly model for baking normal maps and that's that's always time consuming so it's way faster to model something like this uh, the problem is that you don't want something that looks like this in the game you want something that looks more like this where you have the nice highlights but of course uh, you can only have this uh, if you if you somehow uh, give some some thickness to these uh, to these corners, which we cannot achieve just with a simple uh, simple low poly model like this. Uh, so I was trying to solve this because uh, I'm always trying to to make my pipelines faster, and modeling twice is is just too time consuming. And so every time I can. I can skip the high poly stage. I always try to. So I was thinking about how to solve this, and I had an idea, and I decided to to put it to test, and and it worked. So I'd like to share with you guys. So this is the node I created, uh, and you can see that I'm using it at at forty ninety six. Uh, so I'm going to put my network at twenty forty eight, uh, but the node will still be be calculating at forty ninety six. The reason for that is that because I'm, I'm dealing with the, with the edges, I need a, a lot of resolution and, and a lot of precision. So I, I'll always calculate this node at the highest resolution that I can get. So what you need to do is simply bake two maps for your geometry. So here's my UV and you also have to, to worry about breaking your UVs according to your smoothing groups. So every time you have a, a hard edge, you should also have uh, that hard edge as a seam on, a, on your UV. So all the islands should be breaking, uh, should be broken uh, based on, the, based on the, the smoothing groups. So you have to right click and bake model information and we'll need a curvature and a SVG map. The curvature, uh, you, you can have some, some dilation for the curvature, but your SVG uh, should, shouldn't have any dilation or any padding at all. Uh, I'm also embedding these maps. Uh, the curvature you don't need to embed, but the, the SVG you definitely need to embed. Uh, and you see uh, why. So I bake these two maps. I'm going to bring them to my network. Uh, I'll make sure that my SVG is also at the highest resolution possible. My curvature doesn't need to be. I'm going to hook my curvature down here. And my SVG map, I'm going to double click it. Uh, I'll make it grayscale. And then I'm going to select all and make it white. So that's one of the reasons that I, that I uh, embed my my SVG map because this way I can edit it directly and I don't need to 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 add more nodes so I don't need to to use a levels or a, a color to mask node just just to have this black and white uh, so now I just drag this here and you'll see the result so this is the immediate result that I get without any tweaking uh, the, the the node itself has uh, two variables that I can that I can change. One is the width of the of the bevel of the of the chamfer. The other one is the profile, the shape of the chamfer. 
So right now it's using a flat chamfer. I can also use a round one. So you see the difference here. The result, of course, is not as clean as you would get from, from having a high poly model. Uh, but this is so fast that it's definitely worth the, the quality not being as perfect as it will be if, if you had a high poly model. So for instance, uh, if you get here in the corner, you see you know, there, there is something there that doesn't look too good. Uh, but from the distance where this should be seen, so you, know, you never get that close to, to a weapon like, like this in, in a game. So from this distance, it, it looks pretty good. So to show you guys how I made this, uh, I have already copied the, the network, uh, the original network to this graph. Uh, so I'm just going to replace my connections. So everything that you see here is inside this node here. So I'm just going to replace it. So I'm going to move this guy down here and place my network up here. And then I'm going to replace my mask input with my SVG. And I'm going to delete this guy and my curvature input with my curvature. And of course, and now I'm going to link my network to, to my normal map. So to explain a little bit what's going on here, let me expand this a little bit. So this first node uh, is nothing really. It's just a levels node that I'm not actually doing anything uh, with it. And the only reason I, I use it is that it, it can it functions as a as a funnel, uh, so when I want to to replace my map, so if I had another map that I wanted to replace, instead of replacing replacing it at several different locations, so replacing it here, 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 and here, I just replace it once, and this node propagates uh, to the rest. So it's just just to save some time. Uh, so this one we can ignore. Uh, and then up here is where I calculate my normal. And the normal, the base normal that I'll be using for, for my, my chamfer uh, is being calculated on this node here. So if I just get close, I, uh, I'll see that I'm getting my, my normals calculated for, for each uh, UV island. Uh, and that's why it's important to break your UV islands uh, based on your smoothing groups. So for each uh, smoothing group, you should have uh, a separate UV island. Uh, and then, uh, and before I, I do this, I'm doing a, a blur, uh, not too intense, just one uh, value of one. Uh, and the only reason for that is uh, if I don't blur this, I will not really get uh, any any normal at all so that's why uh, you need to blur a little bit uh, then I'm using distance and this distance is just to propagate uh, the normal so I'm going to do a distance uh, a positive distance and then a negative distance just to get the flat value here uh, I don't want the curvature that I get from this node all the curvature is being calculated in a separate point of the network. So I'm using this, these two distance nodes, uh, one using uh, a positive value, another one using a negative value uh, to get the, the, this dilation of, the, of the, the one pixel value of my normal map. So I'm getting the, the, the value from this one pixel here and propagating out and propagating inwards uh, to get this flat value. Uh, then I'm blending this. Uh, then I, I, I'm, I'm creating a kind of a, a invert copy of my normal map. 
So uh, here's the positive null map, here's the negative null map, and I'm blending them uh, in a way that only preserves the, uh, that, that separates what's concave from what's convex. And I'm doing that based on the curvature. So my curvature node uh, will show me with, with uh, brights and darks what is convex and what is concave. So if I, if I, can, if I can mask uh, my blend based on this, so uh, in order to do so, uh, I will just uh, increase the contrast of, of, my, of my curvature. So first, I will actually uh, use a distance, uh, use the distance node to extrapolate that as well because I want the range to, to, to cover as much of the surface as possible. Uh, and then I'll separate them and I'll get everything that is white uh, should be convex, everything that is black should be concave. So when it blends here, uh, I, get, I get the separation uh, between my positive normal and my negative normal. So when I blend, I have the highs and the lows uh, registered correctly. If I don't do that, if I bypass this altogether, uh, you see that uh, where it should be concave now looks convex. So this shape here looks uh, uh, looks as a separate piece, and it shouldn't. So it should be more like this, uh, and that happens because I, I'm separating what's convex from from what's concave. Uh, so this is pretty straightforward, just normal map and invert normal, uh, inverse normal map. Uh, and, then, and then I'm also uh, defining the, the width of the chamfer down here. So this, this network here is to, is to get that, the edge and how to control that edge. So I have my uh, I have my my UVs here, my, my selection here, and all that I'm doing is uh, the first thing that I'm doing is a blur. Uh, this blur is pretty small, 0.1, uh, and then I'm using the difference to get just that line. Uh, if you if you know uh, how to if you don't know how to how to how to get the difference. Uh, it's actually a pretty simple math, uh, so I'm going to edit here. Uh, I'm getting the, the position of my pixel and sampling the first image and the second image, uh, subtracting one from the other, and then using absolute to get, uh, to get the, 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 the correct uh, value. This way, when I use absolute, uh, all the values that were below zero now become above zero. So what was uh, minus 0.1 becomes uh, positive 0.1. So what was negative 0.1 becomes positive 0.1. Uh, the same thing for all the other values, uh, values of course. Uh, so I'm doing this here to get the, the line of difference between the, the, the blurred version of my, of my map and my map. Uh, then I'm using auto levels to, to get uh, the, the, the solid selection instead of just the, the, the darker gray. Uh, I'm using distance to control the width. So the width that you see here is being controlled by this distance node. So if I change this here to 0.2, for instance, you see that now it's sharper. Uh, and this node down here, this, this, uh, this field right here is where I define if it is round or flat. So if I use combine, uh, you see that the result is soft and that gives me the, the, oops, the rounder uh, chamfer. Uh, and if I use only source, that means uh, I'll get the flat value and that's the flat chamfer. Uh, I'm blurring it just a little bit just, just so it doesn't uh, get uh, jagged. Uh, so it's just a 0.1 blur. And this is being used as my mask to blend this normal map, which is the, the, the large 
one that I get from 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 the distance value that I was using here with a flat uh, flat uh, normal color. So when I do this, uh, I can control the size of my chamfer here. So if I change my distance here to one, you see that the chamfer, uh, the, the, the size of the chamfer increases. If I change this, you see that it will get softer as a round chamfer. And that's it. Uh, I hope you guys find some use for, for this note. I hope it helps uh, someone. Uh, I'm, I'm always trying to, to improve my pipeline and I imagine you guys are also uh, always doing something like that. So hopefully this can, uh, this, this may fit uh, into your guys' pipeline as well. All right, have a good one, bye.